Here is the list of the laws we want enacted. Take this, Brutus. Since you have served longest as representative of the plebeians, your experience is greater than mine. You deserve the honor of reading it to the Senate. You've included too many measures, Sicinius. The Senate's going to reject the lot. All the better. But now we won't even get the grain price we wanted. The worse for them, and the better for us. Has it occurred to you that if the Senate has deigned to grant us a hearing, it probably means their situation is a desperate one. The recent disorders have struck fear in their hearts. The plebeians are asking one thing only, grain at normal prices. The plebeians! They never see any further than their own bellies. The price of grain is only an excuse for our petition. Whatever we set in motion must succeed now, and we can aim much further. The Senate will have to enact every law that we are requesting, or make us withdraw the entire list. We'll make no compromise with the patricians. I advise you to move with caution. If not, the patricians will resort to the same means they always use. You mean the military. The new conscription has failed. The veterans, for the most part, are all on our side. The consuls and the patricians and the Senate now have no more teeth left to bite us with. And as for the grain that's about to arrive here from Kuma, the Senate will agree to whatever price we offer. But we haven't been struggling for years for a crust of bread. I thoroughly agree with Sicinius. Why shouldn't all of us have equal rights with the patricians? Since our enemies will adopt their old positions, we'll have to weed them out. I promise the first to go will be Caius Martius, that overbearing descendant of our discredited monarchy. Now read to our faithful comrades in the struggle what I have written. The representatives of the plebeians, Junius Brutus and Sicinius Velutus, convey by these presents to the Senate of the Republic these rights, to which the people of Rome are entitled. Foremost, grain and arrival from Cuma shall be legally sold at prices that guarantee an adequate portion to the poorest of our citizens. Secondly, the office of Tribune of the plebeians shall be legally recognized with the power of veto against any law of the Senate which infringes the rights of the plebeians. Thirdly, all territories confiscated from our enemies shall be the exclusive property of the plebeians, irrespective of military service. Fourthly, the right of enslavement by creditors shall be abolished. Fifthly, all loyal Roman citizens, regardless of social status, are allowed access as candidates to fill the highest offices of the Republic of Rome. Mind your tongue! These plebeians go too far! I summon the Senate to order and permit me to remind the Senators that we are assembled here today to hear the wishes of the people of Rome. They want to abolish our institutions and overthrow the Republican state. We demand equal rights. The only thing on the agenda of our session today is the price control of grain, Sicinius. We must debate that and nothing else. You are out of order, Meninius. We are prepared to debate, but on all of the points that are listed in our agenda. This is a law that binds the Senate and people of Rome. Even so, but by the rules of our procedure, we must debate them in order. I yield the floor to Caius Martius. Noble Senators, the good Menenius is wrong in assuming that in his wisdom he will defeat the ambitions of Brutus and Sicinius. And I will tell you why. I propose that the grain which is due to arrive be distributed free among the population and the treasury shall be refunded with voluntary donations contributed by all the patricians. You fear for your purses. But there are those here who fear for something far different. Something which is good for the people. And strangely enough, what is good for the people is not good for their tribunes. Well, Brutus, what have you to say? Since what you're proposing is to defy us, your challenge is accepted. It is nothing of the sort. We reject the offer. The people of Rome are not asking for charity, but for full recognition of their rights. Your money is safe. Sicinius doesn't want charity. He wants power. The fields are deserted. The military conscription is a failure. More craftsmen desert their work every day. And it all serves the purpose of Sicinius. After overthrowing the monarchy, we'll soon find ourselves slaves to a new tyranny. The tyranny of Sicinius. Caius Martius is a valiant soldier. He hides behind the admiration which the people have for heroes. For this reason, I shall make no answer to his accusations. All of us would be delighted to give him a just reward for his services to the state if he could contain his pride within the bounds of dignity. 
I have just learned that the convoy bringing the grain from Kuma has been attacked by a band of outlaws. The entire shipment has been lost. If some miracle doesn't occur, in a few days, all Rome will be in the grip of famine. This is an infamous trick. That grain never existed at all because the Senate never even bothered to order it. I am going. But remember, the people will find ways to deal with your injustice. This news is one more weapon in the hands of Sicinius. That grain must be recovered at all costs. The soldiers I have at my disposal now are barely enough for the defense of the city. I need only a handful of volunteers. I'll find them. They are trying to overcome us with famine, but they will never succeed. Not if we stand united. Stay within reach of the leaders of your tribes and be ready to fight for your rights more desperately, more heroically than ever before. Our glorious republic is still in its infancy, and these are its growing pains. It can't avoid them, hmm. but it's growing. No, Marcus, my brother's about to leave. Have you spoken to your mother about us? Yes. I might have guessed her answer. The mother of Caius Martius is as proud and haughty as her son. But why are the fates so unfair to us? Because you're a patrician, and I am the son of a plebeian. I feel as though I'm living in a house that's not my own. Only Virginia's on my side. I'll beg her to talk to Martius. Do you think she can convince him? She knows the way to my brother's heart and she can make him listen. But let's not set our hopes too high. We can still be thankful. Marcus, would you do anything in the world for me? Yes, without hesitation. Would you even leave Rome and find a place where no one ever speaks of plebeians or patricians? Where love is the only thing that decides if we are equal or not? I would gladly. Oh. I love you, Marcus. Please stay, Livia. They better not find us, I beg you. Livia. I've had the impression for some time now that you've been trying to avoid me. Is that true? But why should I avoid you? It's you who are never in the house. When you are, four soldiers are always waiting for you. Do come back soon, Marcius. There you are, all fastened. Thank you. Tullius! Is everything in order? All I could manage were 50 cavalrymen. That's more than I thought possible. They'll be sufficient. Stand ready to leave. When are you going to take me with you, Father? When you're as tall as I am. Oh, but eight years is a long wait. And what makes you think you'll have to wait that long? Because I think I'll be around 14 then. Wasn't that how old you were the first time they let you go and fight in a war? That's the way his father behaved at his age. I should think so. What a pity for us. So you want to be a soldier? Yes. See if you can hand me my shield. Do you think you can? I'll prove it. Very good, Marshes. We'll be needing young men like you one day. You mean to fight the Balchians? To fight all of Rome's enemies, whether inside or outside. Goodbye, my little soldier. Virginia, look at me.
My blessing goes with you as always, my son. Julius, that's green. We're on the right road. Yes, but it leads in the direction of the old fortified camp. If the outlaws have hidden in there, we'll never drive them out. There are too few of us. I promise to return that grain to Rome. And I'll return it right on. Yeah. The plebeians are gathering now, but they're still undecided. They fear the reaction of the senators. Civilians of all ages, and even the soldiers are asking for you and for Brutus. We shall be with them at once. The patricians have the gate to Montesacro barricaded. The Edals and soldiers are keeping close watch in it. They appear determined not to let a soul get out of the city. We shall see about that. The consuls will resort to force of arms. Then we too will resort to force in return. That would mean a civil war. I cannot approve of that. I don't think anyone wants to go so far. And I, the least of all. But it won't come to that. Caius Martius is far away with the most reactionary of the patricians. This is the moment to act. To the gate. Not you. We have other work for you today. I will deliver this before dark. Make way! Let the tribunes through! Stand back! Just give the people the word and they'll break down the gate with their bare hands! It's much simpler than we had imagined. Marcus is your son, and he wouldn't dare. I warn you. I have my orders, and I'll obey them. I know that, my boy, but you must recognize that we have good reason. I only know my duty as a soldier. Are you forgetting the respect you owe your father? If I am, I needn't answer to you for it. Open that gate at once, Marcus. The Roman consul forbids it. And may one Roman alone oppose the express will of the people or commit like you in the name of the consul an act of treason? Be still. I will not permit you to accuse my son of treason. Would you rather see him die in front of you? Fellow citizens, you can testify that I have always attempted to avoid useless bloodshed because I hate it. But this wretched handful of traitors has been bribed to bar our way to inalienable rights. I leave it to you to decide. Are you willing to return to your houses discredited and humiliated? Or are you resolute enough to die rather than go on living and suffering in the gilded clutches of the patricians? We'd rather die, but first we'd rather fight it out. Open the gates, then, and let no man set foot between us and liberty. Citizens, stand back. I forbid you to attack these soldiers. They are honest citizens of Rome, just like yourselves, plebeians like the rest of you. Calmly, my friends, calmly. We have come to settle this matter once and for all. So listen to me, I beg you. Listen to me by all the gods. Give the order to open the gate. It's best for all concerned. The senators have decided otherwise. The senators? Am I not their representative? I have the right to decide what's best under the circumstances. It's our duty to suppress this rebellion. Have you the force of arms to suppress it? No. All right, then. How can we stop them from going? If you wish to abandon Rome in her misfortune, you are free to withdraw now, but in the names of all the gods, think carefully. Think of the frightful ruin that may be in store not only for us, who are still Romans, but also for you who no longer are, I beg you. Enough, Meninius. We will not let ourselves be bullied by your eloquence. Leave the plebeians in peace to go wherever they want. Open those gates at once, then.
This is farewell, my son. Pray that we never have to meet each other again except as friends. Marcus! I have a mission to entrust you. Find yourself a good horse at once. You must do your utmost to get in touch with Martius. Pass by my house. I will give you a message for it. Hurry! Right away, sir. is all here, and a lot of other supplies as well. Good. Now I want to find out who paid this bandit. Speak up! No, don't kill me, I'll tell you. But first you must promise me. I'll promise you nothing. Who ordered you? Orphidius, the king of the Vulcans. I knew it. Always Orphidius. Guard this man well. I want the Senate to hear what he has to say. This time, Ophidius will get the answer he deserves. Ave, noble Varsius. Ave. What's the matter? Is Rome on fire? Much worse. A fire would have probably left the Romans united. But instead, read this. So they've gone this far. The blackguards. We march at once. Detail ten men to escort the grain. The rest will come with me. We must be in Rome tonight. Move! You're the son of Junius Brutus? Yes. Isn't he the leader of the revolt? He is. And you? Do you approve of what he's doing? I serve under the standard of Consul Cominius, and I am faithful to my oath. You're a good soldier. As long as there is a voice like yours rising from the Roman people, all is not lost. Hurry to Rome and contact Menenius. This tripod of solid beaten gold will be given by King Ophidius to the winner of the chariot contest. hold the chariot back of this line the longest will win the contest.
magnificent spectacle, King Ophidius. But you don't seem to be enjoying it. You have read my mind. It's not difficult, I admit. I know that you prefer warfare. For us Vulsions, it's a necessity. We'll never be left in peace as long as Rome survives. I also have to admit you're right. But the other chieftains take a different view of it. That's why I'm disgusted and furious when I see my young warriors displaying their strength to win a prize of gold in such a useless and foolish game. First, if you bring good news, judge that for yourself. Rome is split in two camps, I see. You can tell Sicinius that I will keep all my promises. Take this. Give him these sacks of gold with our thanks. And tell him he'll see me very soon when Rome is a conquered city. Because now all of the Vulsions will attack with me. Even if Caius Martius moves against us, the one who believes he's an army in his own right, you may go now. Marcus tell you that... Yes, I got your message. But what has the Senate decided? To negotiate with the plebeians. With those rebels? Our situation has become desperate. And you must not make it worse with your stubborn nature. Cominius should have opposed them with force. Why didn't he? A great part of our soldiers have joined the plebeians on Monte Sacro. That means the defenses of Rome are undermanned and exposed to attack. But at last, with good luck, we can negotiate, offering the grain that you have so bravely recovered. That grain is not to be touched. The Vulsions will attack us, I'm certain. That grain will be used to feed the troops. This revolt should have been crushed a long time ago, but the Senate was too afraid. Now I myself will go to Monte Sacro with my horsemen. Martius, listen to me. I've listened to you long enough. To Monte Sacro! Uh, bring me the first horse you can find. Maybe there is hope for us yet. We won't have to spend even one ounce of this gold if it's true the Vulsian army is already marching. Alphidius counts on getting here within a few days. That will be perfect. The war will run its course. But while Caius Martius fights to win a victory, I will ensure his defeat. Only then will we be able to overthrow the power of the patricians and at my provocation. Sicinius! Sicinius! A cohort of Roman soldiers is heading in our direction. Roman soldiers? Caius Martius is their leader. Let's give him the welcome he deserves. We've taken the wrong road, my friends. We were looking for good Roman citizens. Instead, we find Vulsions, Equians, Sabines. And only the gods know what are the barbarous race. I see enemies, not Romans. You hear what he thinks of us? He despises us plebeians so much that he's blind to who we are. That's why he can't recognize us as Romans. You have no right to call yourselves Romans. You who would abandon her just when the enemy is poised and ready to pounce. Like th 
filthy rats you abandoned the sinking ship that housed and fed you, rather than try to save her. How can you say we were fed? Rome is where patricians eat and plebeians starve to death. We are men, not rats. We were born to freedom. Can't you at least recognize your own soldiers? Brave sons of the people of Rome, with the people of Rome. I recognize you. All of you have fought under me. Junius. Quintilius. Decius. We have often seen the backs of our enemies in flight. You were valorous and made Rome great and feared by all. But you are destroying her with your rebellion. If we are, it's no matter. We detest the Rome of the patricians, and on her ruins we'll build a new Rome of our own. Traitors! There you see the real Caius Martius. His sword is his only argument. He's always been our enemy. Let's cut off his He's head! He's the worst of all! <laughs> My friends, I beg you, help me to dismount from my horse. You wouldn't want a poor old man like me to break a collarbone. Ah. Now listen, Martius, and you, Sicinius. In the name of the Senate, in the name of the people of Rome, and that still includes you, now put away your weapons. This is no time for quarrels. The consul in person is here to tell you what a grave situation is threatening us. What we feared has happened. The Volscians are mobilizing to march on Rome. The enemy will profit from our disorder with a victory swift and complete. It is for you to decide if we all die together or together we all save our fatherland. We don't want to be under your orders any longer. The patricians will punish us if we submit to their control. Of course, that's what they want. We won't no, submit. Never. Silence. Your representatives will answer for you. We'll hear you first, Brutus. I fail to see what other position we can take. If the Volscians want a war, then we will give them one. Brutus is right! We mustn't meet the enemy with open arms. And how are we supposed to know it's really the Volscians who want to wage this war? We're not going to set foot in Rome! You'll have to wait till the Volscians appear to give battle. Then we'll decide whether to fight or not. In this war, the plebeians have nothing to gain. It's your affair and of all the patricians. Listen to me. Please do. All of you listen to me and gather round. Bear with me. If you will, then we can speak calmly and put our minds together. We'll soon find a solution to your problems. Come closer, I beg you. I haven't much voice, you see. And I have something to tell you. Now gather round me. I want to tell you a little story. Once upon a time... Now look, Menenius, you're not going to convince us with some old wives' tale. Who spoke those words? Won't you step forward, sir? Because I'm afraid I can't see you. <laughs> Can you see me now? Yes. And now, sir, close your mouth and open your ears. Hm. I've heard your stories before, and I don't think much of them. I'll hold your tongue. Let Menelius speak. Go on now. Well, this is a story from ancient times. The human body, you see, had barely begun to function when its various members all of a sudden formed a league amongst them to do away with the belly. The most importunate of all, the most intolerant as well, if you can imagine it, was the thumb. What happened then? The belly, so the others said, was only a good-for-nothing glutton who gobbled up everything without ever working in the least, while instead, all the other members did. The ears heard, the feet had to walk, the eyes had to see, and don't forget the nose. So everyone, according to his capacity, made his contribution to the common welfare except the belly. That's only natural. Ah, yes, it's only natural that you would be in league with them. After all, it's you, and all too many like you, who think it natural to conspire against the Senate. Don't get off the subject. What was the useless belly's defense? I agree with you, said the belly. Indeed, I do take all the food which you procure with your talents. But what would become of you if I were not here to supply your needs? Eh? It is from me that blood is furnished to the heart and to the brain, to the muscles and the nerves. And it is due to me that you are able to work at all, whenever you like. If it weren't for me, you would wither away and perish, my friends. If you're interested, these are still the belly's words, mind you. I might also point out the fact that for what you feed into me, I give to you the purest of flour in return. <laughs>
while I must be content with the husks. Well, what do you think of that? The belly's defense was a good one, but the comparison doesn't hold true. If the belly is the governor of the human body, then the Senate is the bellyache of Rome. You think so, do you? Prattling thumb. Prattling thumb? Why call me that? Hm. Because even though you are the most brainless and purposeless of all, you want to be the leader of this revolution. Now get out from under my nose at once, will you? Or you'll find that I can simply sneeze at you once and away you'll go. <laughs> I grant you, we are all members of one continuous body. But when we ask to be given flour, you don't give us as much as the husk. Ah, oh, that's where you're mistaken. The proof of what I tell you is here in front of you. Caius Martius, the soldier whom you loathe and hate. Without a moment's doubt or hesitation, he left Rome and returned with the grain that was stolen after defeating the outlaws against heavy odds. And now he places that grain, free of charge, entirely at your disposal. Well, that's what we came here for. All we wanted was food. I do not mean to cast suspicion on what Menenius tells us. But Caius Martius is silent. We want to hear from his own lips what Menenius has promised. Menenius expresses the will of the Senate. And the Senate's will is mine. One moment now, one moment. Marcus is right. We agree to take the grain. And we agree to fight the war. But the plebeians' demands were quite different in the Senate. What have you to say to them, Menenius? If you return to Rome, then the Senate will weigh the merits of your request. But don't you have full power to deal with us? I do. Then at least let the Senate, as a sign of good faith, grant one of our requests. The one which would declare the tribunes of the plebeians sacred and inviolable. And whoever dares lay a finger on them will be sentenced to death without appeal or pardon. When this is granted, I promise you on my solemn oath that all of us will take up arms against the Volscians. I shall be the first. Well, I'm at last hearing the kind of words that appeal to my sense of patriotism. In the name of the Senate of Rome, I grant this. Right here is Antium. That's where you'll find Ophidius with a van of his army of Vulcans. While here is Corioli. The city is fortified and the garrison is a heavy one. They have plenty of supplies and they have water in abundance. They could resist a siege for several months. So that as you move toward Antium, your right flank is exposed to the enemy's offensive. Exactly, Martius. I can't make an attack on the Vulcans as long as this threat exists from their allies. And if Corioli holds out, that will oblige us to resign ourselves to a long drawn out war. And I suppose you can well imagine with what likely consequences. The populace expects an easy victory. It's your task as well as your duty to give them one. Frogs croak, but fortunately eagles soar in silence. Very well then, it's agreed. I will move on Corioli. By tomorrow night, I hope to give you the news that you expect. Give my regards to Sicinius, and tell him I shall be on time for our appointment. Claudius, give the order to break camp. We'll leave Antium under cover of night and in absolute silence. If the information I've received is reliable, the Romans are about to make a gross tactical error, and we must take advantage of it.
Ave Orphidius. You have heard what happened, but I swear I did the best I could. The plebeians are irresolute and famine did the rest. There's no reason to blame yourself. And after all, a battle that I win will add greatly to my glory. Cominius is aware of my advance? No, he thinks you're still in camp near Antium. And are you sure that he split his army in two? One part is besieging Coriolis under the command of Martius, and the other lies five miles from you. Coriolis will hold out. I'll defeat the forces of Cominius, and afterward attack Martius from the rear. And the Romans will be destroyed, once and for all. I have a hundred soldiers under my command. The minute you launch your attack on Cominius, I'll order them to fall back in retreat, and I'll shout that we are betrayed to the enemy. Most of our soldiers are expecting nothing else. There will be a wave of panic then, and nothing will stand between you and your victorious march on Rome. My thanks, Sicinius. Till tomorrow. You will break camp at once, taking the major part of the troops with you. Proceed to the Amaseno River and take up your positions on the other side. There you will await developments. It's a great risk dividing our forces. It's one we have to take. The forces remaining with me will be weaker, and the enemy's desire to attack stronger. You'll see. It won't be long before they'll be coming out of their lair. Only then must you attack. The defenders of Corelia are keeping constant watch on us. Move forward at once. I understand. And if our luck holds, we'll take them. Wait, Marcus. You stay here. Choose half a company of archers and a troop of cavalry. To induce the Volscians to sally forth, they must be convinced that we are very few here. Very well. I'll select those who have combat experience with you. They won't be needing any explanations. Such men know instinctively what to expect. And you? What do you expect? Possible extinction. You're brave. Not quite as brave as I would like. Beyond a certain point, bravery is desperate rashness. That point is beyond my limits, I must admit. There's something about you that escapes me. Cominius is fond of you. But you requested to be placed under my command. And yet, being near the consul and enjoying his esteem would have been a great help to your career. I'll tell you, but not tonight. Tomorrow, perhaps, if we win our battle and at the end of it, I'm one of the survivors. See to it, they all take cover behind those trees on the other side. I want the archers to withhold their attack until the Romans have crossed the river. Give the order. marching out of Corelli. At last. Tullius, hurry to Lashes and tell him to come back at once. Marcus, take command of the rear guard and hold on as long as you can. You, you, follow me. 
to Corelli. Hurry! Hurry! Form up in a square of shield. First strike, kneeling. straight into an ambush, all right. Now we'll have to fight our way out. Forward! Russians are fighting us outside Kareli. Martius needs your help there at once. That's impossible. I can't break off the battle here. Tell Martius his plan has failed. Forward! Light the torches.
You've come back too late. Corelli has surrendered. Which of the guards came to your help? See for yourself. Where's Lashes? The Vulsions have drawn him into an ambush, and he's fighting a desperate battle to cut his way through to us. Only a very few soldiers are needed to garrison Corelli. The rest can take to their horses. You've been wounded. You must have it dressed. I haven't the time. Lashes needs us at once. We are horses! Wait till they're all inside the valley. It'll be the Romans' graveyard. The Romans are coming through the valley. Get ready! for the people for this cold-blooded murder. Corelli has fallen. 
Would you run when victory is ours? No! 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 Forward then, and fight to your last breath. I must humbly disclaim the Senate's generosity, which the populace also shares today. For if anyone merits your thanks for the great victory over the Vulcans, the merit is due entirely to Caius Martius. He alone conquered the city of Corioli, and without pause, rushed at once to my assistance. He has refused to take the tenth part of the enormous booty captured from the enemy, the share which is his by right. My sword accepts no reward. As you wish. And we must not impose upon him the obligation of accepting what he does not want. But there is one honor he cannot refuse, that all of us, from now to the end of his days, shall address him by the name he has gloriously earned and which is already current in spite of himself in the language of his soldiers. He captured Coriolanus, and we shall call him Coriolanus. Long live Coriolanus! I have another proposition to make to the Senate. As the present consular year approaches expiration, we will never be afforded a better occasion for us to designate as our candidate Caius Martius Coriolanus. All hail the consul Coriolanus! Coriolanus for consul! We can find a way to stop him. Rather difficult, I think. The plebeians consider him their hero. Right now, but not for much longer. We recognize the tribune of the plebeians. The plebeians agree with the senators. Let Caius Marcius seek the consulship. But I recall to the senators' memory, you need the votes of the plebeians. Caius Marcius will have to seek them, crawling and begging. Campaigning, that is to say, like an ordinary citizen. Humbly begging, he will solicit the mandate of the people. He will go before them in person to request their votes. I have no ambitions. I've always been a soldier, and a soldier I wish to remain. After the battle, while we were coming back, I took him off to one side, and... and I just told him. Now, Marcus, you tell me the truth. Well, that isn't exactly the way we got started, but essentially that's how it went. He was the one who asked me the questions, and before I realized what I had said, I had told him everything. And what did he say then? Why, he burst into roars of laughter. My brother really <laughs> laughed? Yes, and he told me I was a coward. But then he said in my place he wouldn't have wasted one hour. He would have made off with the girl at once and let the rest of the world think what it wanted. And guess what I told him on that subject? You can tell me that part later, can't you? No, I must tell you now. I said that if he had raised any objection, then his gentle little sister would have been made off with and without one moment of hesitation. And the suggestion was yours in the first place. And Martius? Martius was very serious. Livia is like me, he said. <laughs> We're both too rebellious. Not anymore, Marcus. I've nothing to complain of as long as I have you. alive and victorious and you weep. If I'd been brought home on a beer, would you have smiled? Don't say such things. You shouldn't begrudge your wife at least one tear for each of your wounds. Those aren't the wounds that pain me most. It's the ones inflicted by my Roman enemies that are the deepest. 
And now that the Senate has offered you the consulship, your enemies will be more bitter than ever before. Your own modesty and your integrity have only increased their hatred. They would even use your own virtues against you. I'll never be consul. The Senate knows how I feel about it. It would be better for all of us, dear. Look. Look how well he sleeps. We'll always have someone to defend us. Shh. Who is calling? The Consul Cominius and Menenius Agrippa. Inform your master. You see? The consulship comes knocking at your door. I'll send them away. You mustn't offend your true friends. Go and give them a warm welcome. Mama, who's that out there? Some friends. Now close your eyes and go back to sleep. Tell me the story about the time Hercules fought that serpent, the one with the hundred heads. Did it really have a hundred? A hundred? And maybe more. Hercules was too busy to count them. But it had a lot of heads. All those poisonous mouths trying to bite him. As bad as a crowd of fools obeying its instincts. We can go on arguing like this for another day and another night. But you will never force me into this shameful comedy. Never. It's a tradition. That to which I refuse to conform. There's a certain modesty that no one may violate. In war I have only done my duty. To boast of it is repulsive to me. The idea of showing my wounds in public is disgusting. Going from house to house, begging for votes for a position I have never wanted. The Senate has decided you shall be consul. If the people also want me, I will obey, but I will not beg votes from anyone. You are wrong. You know my character, Mother. I am as you made me. But you have enough strength, my son, to dissimulate your true character. The vote is a sacred right of each citizen, and you are bound to recognize it. With a mask of humility and one kind word and a promise, that's how you conquer the hearts of the plebeians. Don't think it dishonoring to seek their votes, since it's necessary that you become consul for the welfare of all Rome. Will you endure it? If you respect your mother, then do as she says. You will win the support of all ranks. Martius, I urge you to do this. You're forcing me into a comedy that I shall never learn to play as long as I live. But let it be as you wish, Mother. I consent. Menenius, you must prompt me. What rules must I follow to play this farce? The rules of courtesy. Very well. I taught him to hold his head up and to fear no other mortal. But this arrogance is entirely of his own creation. You don't know how I dread the consequences. So stay very close to him. Now don't you worry. He's our next consul. Not on your life. His arrogance is the point where he's weakest. Why haven't you provoked him into showing it as I told you? That's what we've been trying to do. But Coriolanus flouts us on every occasion. On the Esquiline and the Palatine and the Juniculum. He's already garnered more votes than he needs. Where is he now? In front of the Senate House. Everywhere he goes there's a crowd. It's not every day they get to see a man like Coriolanus as he goes begging for votes carrying no arms and wearing humble garments. I've prepared our last weapon. With this, we'll be able to provoke a reaction from him. This is despicable. I won't do it. Stay away then, if you are so scrupulous. We'll let the plebeians take you to account for your last minute desertion. I'd rather have my conscience at rest. The shield of feeble minds. That's all the use of conscience is. Let's be off. Any further delay may be fatal. And you? Do you know why I'm here? No, I don't know anything and I haven't done anything. You tell us why you've come here. I assure you, it's not of my choosing. Perhaps it's because of my merits. What's that? You have to have our votes if you want to become consul. Then why don't you give them to me so I won't have to beg them of beggars? If we give you what you want, then we want something in return. Tell me, just what price do you put on the consulship? 
when it costs you to beg us for the favor. Very well, then, since that's the custom. Will you do me the honor of giving me your votes, kind sirs? Will that do? I promise you my vote. You have mine. And mine, too. Is there anyone else? It's done, then. I've gained three more votes. And for what they're worth, I deeply thank you. Coriolanus is just making fun of us. He used to call us rabble, and now he calls us kind sirs. But his tone hasn't changed. That's only his manner of speaking, but he's a kind-hearted man. You've done much for your countrymen in war, but in peacetime, what have you done for us? Is this a riddle? No. You've made your point. I will not receive your vote. What my friend meant to say was that even though you're the terror of our enemies, you've always been the scourge of our friends. There's no love lost between you and the plebeians. And you attest to that fact. I thank you. Since it means that in matters of love, I am not common. He has no weapon, but his tongue is as sharp as any sword blade. Make way! Make way for the Tribune! Make way! Open your eyes, fellow citizens. If Caius Martius has elected your consul, it means that you will lose at one blow all of your liberty. Silence! Leave the people the liberty to decide for themselves. Caius Martius has conducted a dignified campaign, and the votes he's assured proclaim him our consul. Our consul? Those votes will be withdrawn when I tell the truth about Caius Martius, so-called Coriolanus. See for yourselves. <laughs> the fate that Caius Martius has in store for you. What's the meaning of this disgusting farce? Don't touch him. Remember, the person of the Tribune is sacred. I wouldn't pollute my hands with such carrion. I will not answer his insults. Better than my words is the evidence of this poor man's body. Have you all seen who it is? It's Furious. He fought in the campaign against the Vulcans. He enrolled as a soldier to fight for Rome when she was in danger, and he was killed. But not by the Vulcans. A Roman general did this, and he was a patrician, a liar and a killer. The one who stands before you as candidate for the highest honor and makes you call him Coriolanus. Go on, Coriolanus. Why don't you ask the man you murdered for his vote? That ought to be enough to enthrone you, not as a consul, but as a tyrant. I've heard enough of these lies. Uh, a man who would desert in the face of Rome's enemies deserves only death. <laughs> you dare to call me a tyrant? You who seek to gain power by the foulest means? One day I shall tear the lying tongue from your treacherous mouth and silence you forever. Listen to what I have to say. Why this foolish shouting when the occasion demands the most clear-cut sentence of immediate death for the way Caius Martius has dared to offend you? If you want a sentence, you shall have it. The senators? We'll hold a trial. There will be no trial in the Senate. You have heard the testimony, and you are the judges. Caius Martius has committed an outrage before the law. Now, what is your sentence? Send him to exile. Liberate us from our enemies. Exile from our enemies. Finish him. Finish him. Exile. If that is your decision, let the popular vote be enacted by the senators. I trust none of you has any reason to oppose the people's justice. To a thief, and even to a slave on trial, ordinary justice offers a chance to speak and defend himself. Would you deprive this man of it? Deprive Coriolanus? Let us hear his words. I have no guilt to justify. Then it's settled. He is exiled. Ediles, conduct this man to the gates of the Stand city. back. I received these wounds defending your city while you were running away. It's not for you to banish your defender, but rather for me to turn my back on you.
And this is the way that Rome rewards the bravest of her servants. When he has gone forever, then she'll appreciate him. Please take me with you. It's impossible. My strength will be in my loneliness. of King Ophidius is no place for the likes of you. Be off with you. If you want a bone to gnaw, go into the courtyard with the other beggars. What's going on here? You, what do you want? Nothing from you, but from your master, all I have lost. Get out, or else King Ophidius will have you whipped. Perhaps he would embrace me. You can see you don't know the king. Who is that man? What does he want? What's he doing here? He doesn't make any sense. He must be a fool. Be off. Who are you? Don't you recognize me? No, but you must be a stranger because no one who knows me would have dared break into my palace. Are you a Roman? I was. And what is your name? Come closer and you can read it in my eyes. Caius Martius. The man we named Coriolanus as an honor now shamefully deserves it. Caius Martius has become our enemy. Ovidius has made him his equal in command of his army. And the Vulcans are invading the territory of the Romans. And all of this, the Romans owe to Sicinius. Of course. If the traitor called Coriolanus has now unmasked himself, you owe it solely to me. An unjust exile is crying aloud for vengeance. And it will fall on the heads of all of those who lacked the strength of purpose to prevent it. Give him battle instead of bewailing him. Martius was our bulwark and our surest defender. You, with your intrigues, have made him an instrument of war for our destruction. Summon the people to arms, all the people. So we shall, but I fear this war will go against us. Our garrisons are gone, surrendered. I fear that by this time tomorrow, the Vulcans will stand in front of Rome. Corioli, Vetulia, Lavinio have already fallen to the enemy. We are reduced to the forces of desperation. Ten thousand prisoners, and the greatest booty I've ever seen. Three chests of gold, and ten filled to the brim with silver. Half of it is yours. You may keep it all. 
But remember, Rome is mine. Reach out and grasp it then. Rome will fall at the first attack. I shall be the one to decide the time and manner of the attack. Don't worry, I'll keep my word. Even if it ruins me. Explain yourself. I have every reason to fear your success. The Vulcans swear by your name. And they think our victories are all you're doing. I have lost their affection. You'll regain their affection when peace comes. I hope you're right. Orphidius. Well? I must ask you a favor. There's a young Roman officer outside who's been taken prisoner. He's wounded. I ask you to allow me to set him free. Do as you wish. Guard? At your orders, sir. Send in the prisoner. Leave us. Sit down. I'd rather stand. I saw you in combat today. If your comrades had had your bravery, I wouldn't be here today before the walls of Rome. But you were alone. You may spare me your citations. Very well. I didn't bring you here for that. You are free to return to Rome. And if I refuse to go? <laughs> ah, yes. Everything coming from me is suspect. Even freedom. To the Romans, I'm a traitor. There's no other word for you. One day you will understand the reasons that have armed me against my country. You were done a great wrong, I admit it, but it's unfair for you to blame all of Rome for it. I can't stop to separate the bad grain from the good. What about your friends, your loved ones? I have no friends any longer, no affections. Now go, go, go back to Rome. Livia loves you. Try to be happy with her, if that is possible. Take this to Virginia. At least she'll understand. Very well. I'll go. Now go. Farewell, Marcius. Are you Marcus? Yes. Wait for me here. The king has ordered me to give you a horse. Very well, I'll wait. Thank you again, Sicinius. Your collaboration has been indispensable to us. In the meantime, we need more information. You'll have it before morning. He's playing both sides. There's treachery here, that's certain. It's in the very nature of Sicinius. But our greatest peril still is Martius. We have to detach him from the Volscians. How can we? We've asked him to negotiate. He refuses even to receive us. Then all we can do now is fight him. From all indications, we should expect the enemy to make their attack tonight. But we'll make him pay dearly for our lives. Well, we still have another possibility. What is it? The devotion of Martius to Virginia and the veneration he has for his mother. We can beg these ladies to go to the enemy camp. Martius will not refuse to listen to what they say. Do you think they'll agree to go to him? They're true Roman matrons. Roman matrons like his mother are ambitious for their sons. The sun has gone behind the hills, and at nightfall, the wailing goes through the dead or abroad. Let's go to the ladies. And Sicinius? You mustn't let him out of your sight. A serpent like that may strike at any moment. Ready your men and wait for orders. They will come from Coriolanus. Go. We have to attack them tonight. And I'm quite certain that Rome will be yours without any resistance. I think you've been fooled by our easy victories. I know that both patricians and plebeians are determined to fight. I think you're mistaken. In Rome, I have friends who are planning to give us aid. If we concentrate our attack upon the Latin gate, it will fly open. Here, 
Read that. Sassinia! And his people. The man I detest more than any of had you banished from Rome. The man is now your best ally. Sassinia's my ally? <laughs> That's amusing. You must think I'm out of my mind. Be careful, Martius. You're on the side of the Vulcans. Sassinius is a traitor. But war is the art of the possible. And any help is welcome. Not from Sassinius. He knows what to expect when I enter Rome. We have a separate agreement, he and myself alone. At what price? In any other case, he would have been content with gold. But this time he's demanding more. I promised him your head. Are you plotting against me? Keep calm, Martius. I was simply leading him on. I know very well if I touched the hair of your head, the Vulcans would turn against me and rebel. Have you received any other messages from Sicinius? Indeed I have. If I need them, will you give them to me? I will. Look here. I'll show you a plan of attack that doesn't need the help of Sicinius. Hey, you men. Have a look there. They must be Roman women. Prisoners? I don't think so. They're dressed in mourning. Yes, they're wearing white veils. Wait outside. Marcius, you have visitors. Who are they? Ladies from Rome. I know this ordeal will bring great pain. Please go in. No. You come in too. If only to prove my loyalty. Mother. No, Martius. First, I want you to listen to me. Before you speak, I know what you have come to ask of me. Rome has sent you to obtain by words the victory which her soldiers could not gain by force of arms. The last hope of a desperate city. Now I will give you my answer. No. Then you will hear my voice crying from the flames when you have set fire to your own city. I have given the Volsians my word. I cannot stop now. And I will not stain my honor as a soldier. I've led them to war, promising them victory. I must keep my word. It's not your honor as a soldier that's at stake now, but you are throwing away more. The way a war will end is always uncertain, and you know that better than we. But one thing is quite certain. If you are the victor in this war, all of your glory shall end when the war does. And your name will be cursed, because you will have brought your country to ruin. I will not listen to you any longer. Go home, mother. Leave me, all of you. We'll go home now, Virginia. For this man does not belong to us. His wife is not a Roman matron. And this fatherless child only by chance resembles him. Be quiet! Your words may kill me, but they will not turn me from my oath. Then you shall also hear my oath. You will not enter Rome, I swear, without making your way with all of your Vulsions over this body which gave you your life. And also your son one day will be your sworn enemy.
Only your own conscience may judge your answer. Rome is asking you to judge her peacefully. Do as she asks. Call a truce to this war of revenge. If you can conquer yourself, you will have conquered also for the Vulcans. Tell Rome I'm prepared to hold counsel. That's all I can say. Not now, Mother. In Rome. I'll go there alone. I know what you're feeling. If you won't fight the war, then make a peace to all of our advantage. The window overlooks the entrance to the Senate House. At 30 paces, it'll be child's play to hit him. But you must tell us when we're to carry out our orders, before or after the hearing in the Senate. Before or after, it makes no difference. Just see that he's killed, that's all. If he escapes us this time, it means the end for us. Leave after I've gone. is capable of error. I am no exception. But fate has favored me. For when the darkness was thickest behind the blindfold that covered my eyes, she preserved for me a mother and a wife. The treaty I offer you guarantees the Romans and the Volscians peace and security for 30 years. Like the Sabines and the Latins, the Volscians too will become members of the Italic community now being born. If you accept, the siege will be immediately lifted and the Volscians will return to their homes. I will follow them. My presence among them will be your guarantee. Accept, noble senators, this act of peace from a man of war. The senators have already approved, accepted. I recognize the tribune of the plebeians. The plebeians want to live peacefully. We approve for the plebeians. We will not. This so-called treaty which Caius Martius deigns to offer is a flagrant capitulation on the part of Rome. The plebeians do not accept it. This man speaks in the name of a people he has always betrayed. Examine these. There are messages he sent to the king of the Volscians before and after my secession. Before we declared this war. They are forgery. I have not turned traitor, but he has. I shall appeal to the populace. And I shall be there when you do so. Let us go. They're coming out now. Ah!
Now speak. Plebeians, listen to me. This man who wears the armor of the Volscians and who has led our enemies to the very foot of the walls of Rome has passed all restraint in his arrogance. He would now impose on the Senate and what used to be his own fatherland a peace that dishonors your city. We would be stupid to entrust our fate and our fortunes to the hands of this renegade Roman. It's true. I have led an army on Rome. But now I offer you an honorable peace. While this man who accuses me was willing to open the gates of the city for an unconditional surrender in order to gain power. Listen to the words of Brutus. He will confirm what I have told you. What he says is the truth. The proof is already in the hands of the consul, and the senators have recorded the evidence. Sesenius has always been a traitor. <laughs> this man wanted war, and he shall have it. But only between him and me. Give me your sword. Take it. I believe these are the arts you prefer. Wait a minute. You're mistaking your aim, I think. The wind has changed direction. Thus perish all traitors to Rome. Glory and everlasting victory to Coriolanus! Cheer up, my friend. Sosinius is dead now, and we can both live in peace forever after. Long live Coriolanus. see leave her gates another man more noble than Caius Martius. And history shall call your son Coriolanus. Mm -hmm.